I felt like being a cook, it has helped me in some way with my ADHD or the ADHD has had an effect on why I like cooking. The purpose of this video is to relate cooking itself with being a chef and like why some of us might actually work better under stress, like we seek out stressful situations and it's because of this dopamine response that we get, which I, I actually didn't know, I thought it was really cool. So I decided to investigate and I actually found some uh, information. So for those of you that don't know, there are three aspects of ADHD, the three main characteristics of ADHD. They are impulsivity, risk-taking, and novelty-seeking. These three characteristics make up a majority of ADHD symptoms, also, for people that have ADHD, they tend to be distracted easily, which is something that everybody kind of knows. But what most people don't know is hyper focus is also associated with it. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder doesn't really do justice to the range of symptoms you actually feel. What else really doesn't do justice is how it is portrayed in shows or ADHD is underplayed and it's like, oh, you just need to pay attention, whatever, like South Park did. Hello. I'm Dr. Richard Shea, here to tell you about my exciting new drug-free treatment for children with attention deficit disorder. <laughs> Sit down and study! <laughs> we are some of the people that are kind of on our own when it comes to this kind of stuff. Like, we get distracted easily, we, we try to pay attention, and we can't... Hold on a second... We try to pay attention and there's just something in our brain that doesn't like dopamine receptors and stuff that don't, that they, the connections just aren't being made the way that they're made in a normal brain. So what we want to do and what our brain decides it's going to do are two completely different things. Now this, this has an effect on our daily lives and people with ADHD are also more prone to suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety, and other disorders. A lot of it will stem from this sense of kind of doing it on your own or having your neurodivergence go undiagnosed. So that's a big part of it. There's a, a really good resource for people with ADHD that you could check out. You may actually already know who she is. The YouTube channel is How To ADHD. She has 1.35 million followers with some of her views going up above a million. She's done TED Talks and stuff like that. She's really great. Hello brains and hearts. A lot of times people ask me what they can do to help somebody with ADHD. And the truth is a lot of the things that people do to try are not as effective as they might like them to be. One of the characteristics is if we aren't getting stimulation, then we seek it out. Having ADHD isn't the same as being a sociopath, but there are people that have these psychological conditions where they are unable to feel excitement or emotion through a lot of things. And not all of them turn into serial killers. Some of them do things like they seek out like jumping out of airplanes and bungee jumping and extreme snowboarding and they do a lot of this extreme behavior because that's the only thing that gives them that that sense of, uh, you know, that sense of excitement and that thrill. Other neurodivergent brains have other ways of, of coping as well, whether that's coping with a stressful situation or trying to seek out a dopamine response. It, it really sucks because it's like we struggle doing boring things, whereas other people can kind of just push through it and we can push through it. It takes us more time to push through it. And a lot of times teachers see this as dawdling or whatever, when really we're just kind of gearing up to get ready for this. How does being a cook help you with ADHD? So there are four aspects to being a cook, which are also tools that people can use to combat ADHD. And I shouldn't even say combat ADHD, live with ADHD effectively. So if you're studying, the reason why you procrastinate as somebody with ADHD is because that time pressure is uh, something that raises dopamine response. And we, we like that. That's why we're so good in an emergency situation when everybody else is freaking out. Because we thrive, we literally thrive on that because of how our brains receive and send chemicals, especially like dopamine response. So the, the four things are novelty, urgency, challenge, and interest. So how would novelty be in being a cook? Well, you're given permission to come up with a special for the night. You are rolling out a new menu, rolling out new menu items. Uh, you get to work a station you normally don't get to work. Just being new at cooking in and of itself is novel. It's something that you haven't done before. A sense of urgency. We are, we have a sense of urgency from the time, pretty much from the time we clock in until we go home with the exception of like prep and, 
and uh, you know cleaning up and stuff like that. But even prep can be under a time crunch because you might come in two hours before lunch service and then you got to do lunch service and whatever. So you only have a certain amount of time to prep X amount of stuff, whatever. Challenge. Being a cook is challenging. It is a, the, the challenge, the sense of being challenged is something that the ADHD brain absolutely loves. So we have three things right there. Then the last one is interest. If you um, are interested in cooking, you will go look for that thing that interests you. So you are interested in cooking. You're interested in this channel. So you're either sub to this channel or you're watching this video because um, it's tied to an ADHD tag of some kind. So even if you're not a cook, this actually can, can, can help you if you have an ADHD brain. Not all my videos are about this, but this one particular video I wanted to do because of having the neurodivergence and not a lot of people understanding it. So novelty, urgency, challenge, and interest are the four things that we can use as tools to help us handle ADHD effectively. We, ha we also have to have times to recharge. So a lot of reasons why somebody with ADHD might end up quitting is things like not even getting that like 10 minutes to kind of like fill your cup back up. And because of the stigma that surrounds ADHD, bosses don't really know how to approach that effectively. And so they just think you're being a pussy because you wanna take a 10 minute break. When really it's like you've been stimulated you now need that small period of time to kind of like gather yourself back up again and get ready for the next whatever. If you don't get that, like you may have noticed um, if you have ADHD or if you suspect you have ADHD, you may have noticed that you can push yourself really hard for a while, but you, you'll end up coming up against this kind of like wall where it feels like you're trying to wade through mud almost. Like you just like, you're looking at the tickets and you're trying and you just you can't, like everything's kind of a mess, but it's different. ADHD is on a spectrum, just like everything else. So some people have it mildly. Some people are homeless because of it. Like it, it's something that can really have a debilitating effect on people. Uh, a lot of these things I'm saying because we are kind of on our own when it comes to ADHD. We're on our own. Um, work is not very accommodating. It's not something that's recognized uh, the way that I feel like it probably should be. Um, neither is depression. And, and I think, like I said before, I think it's a combination of it being used as an excuse and people deciding that they're going to self-diagnose themselves as ADHD or self-diagnose themselves of being bipolar or depressed or whatever when they don't really have these disorders. It waters it down for the people that actually are diagnosed. The thing about ADHD, it, it, somebody asked in my poll if ADHD is even real, which I responded, yes, it absolutely is. It's actually tied to a gene. This gene is tied to dopamine production. The dopamine production is the reason why a lot of things happen the way that they do and why this impulsivity takes place. I got bored in school, so I started fucking with other students. I would wait for even even as far back as first grade. I spent more time behind my teacher's desk because she just didn't know. She was pulling her hair out. She didn't know what to do with me. You know, I would go through, they'd be doing story time. I would sneak off and I would go like screw with everybody's desk and I would like pull markers out of one desk and put it in another and take somebody else's pencil box out and put it in a different one. You know, I would screw around with my shirt. I would just, I would be really obnoxious. Like I do not blame her because she didn't have the tools to deal with it. Most people didn't. This inhibition of dopamine means that we will try to trigger our own fight or flight response. So this doesn't just mean getting distracted. This doesn't just mean getting bored. This this doesn't just mean having depression and suicidal ideation and all that. This also means seeking out a fight or flight response means that we might actually intentionally get into trouble. Now, I'm not thinking to myself before I get in trouble, I'm going to go do this thing because I'm going to get yelled at. But my brain isn't working right. So I will go and impulsively do something and then I get a dopamine response from getting in trouble. And it's almost a positive reinforcement. Now, obviously being 37, that's not that doesn't happen nearly as much. 
I've been able to grow to learn to manage it having not been medicated my whole life. But that's not the same for everybody. If you check out that channel I mentioned earlier, she talks about how she was nearly homeless, how she dropped out of school and like her whole life started falling apart because of this stuff. 4% of the population has ADHD, 4%. So that includes people that are undiagnosed. Now, if we just do some math really quick, I don't give a shit about premium calculator. Okay, clear this. Fucking God. What is 4% of 350 million? That would be 14 million. 14 million people. That is, that's actually quite a bit of people. That's a lot. Population of New York. The population of New York is 8.468 million people. So the amount of people in the U.S. that have ADHD are almost double the population of New York City. Should you disclose to your employer that you have ADHD? You could. Um, I wouldn't. Personally, I wouldn't. Just because, like I said earlier, a lot of them don't really understand. Um, you're more likely to get made fun of for having it. Uh, it's it's sad. It's one of those sad but true you if you are in a work setting and you are and you do have ADHD and there has been a positive response to that ADHD um, leave a comment below and let me know about what your experience is I do know that those places exist but I don't want to set somebody up to ma get made fun of and to, to feel like a piece of crap because of some issues that they might be having or accommodations they feel like they need that they aren't getting. If you are watching this video as somebody, as a subscriber, somebody stumbled on my channel and you do not have ADHD, I just want you to keep an open mind to people that have at least been diagnosed uh, with it or highly suspect that there's something wrong, that they are neurodivergent in some way because neurodivergence is a lot more common than a lot of people think. And I think keeping an open mind to that and understanding how somebody works will go a long way to helping train them, helping make accommodations for them, helping them feel more like they deserve to be in the workplace. We are all a team on the cook line. So I feel like knowing somebody's uh, little nuances that they have and the things that uh, trigger them or whatever, I think all of that kind of stuff can go a long way towards making a cohesive and reliable team. It will make training easier and all that kind of stuff. So keep, keep all that in mind. If you have any specific questions relating to having ADHD and being a cook or living with it, something that you may have been diagnosed with recently, and it's not about medication because I haven't been medicated, so I am not very good at that. Plus, I'm not a doctor, so I don't have the tools and equipment that I need to give you the right information as far as which meds to take or how certain meds make you feel versus others or whatever. If you need some type of regulation, I found what helps me is actually caffeine. I, I don't know why. I don't know why stimulants help. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, but I just know that they help. Having some coffee or energy drink or whatever is actually beneficial. Hang in there. You're not alone. If you know somebody with ADHD, just have more of an open mind to what they're going through. And if they tell you that they need something, take that seriously. You know, leave questions and comments below. So anyways, I got a dog to check on. The puppy is probably tearing everything up and uh, rolling around in the cat box. So you guys have an awesome day and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.